All right, good evening, everybody. Dr. Todd Williams joining you tonight on this Sunday evening, 8 p.m. here on the East Coast. I'm coming to you live. This is Wisdom Talk with Dr. Paul Kreitz, and I am very privileged and blessed tonight to be joining you. I am uh, hope that you are having a great Memorial Day weekend, having a great weekend here in South Carolina. As you come on tonight, let me know where you are watching from. If you're watching in the United States, tell us what state you're watching from. If you're watching from outside of the United States, let us know what country that you are watching from as well. I have a fantastic message for you tonight. An unbelievable word that I'm going to give you tonight about eight strategies for dealing with mental attacks. So stay with me tonight. I'm going to try not to keep you long tonight because I'm going to be going out uh, with my family to the fire pit and we're going to be roasting some hot dogs tonight. I'm looking forward to a day off tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take a true day off. That's right. No phone calls, no texts, no messages, no social media, no work, nothing tomorrow. I don't even know the last time I took a day off. So tomorrow is going to be a true day off. I'm just going to sit in my chair and eat barbecue and slaw. That's my plan tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So glad you could join me tonight. I'm going to give just a couple of minutes for everybody uh, to get on here and uh, I'm going to share some things with you. I shared this with my household of faith today and it was very rich. It was, it was good. So let me stop and see who all I've got with me so far tonight. Bonnie Kreitz. Good evening, Miss Kreitz. I am glad you are here with us. I hope that you are having a great weekend so far in beautiful West Virginia. Good evening, Jeff Patzer. I'm glad you are here. I'm sure that the weather is phenomenal in Florida right now. Man, it, it turned a little bit cool. I think we had outdoor service this morning. It got down to 59 degrees. I couldn't believe it for Memorial Day weekend. But it's been great all day. It's been on like the mid to high 60s, which is very cool for South Carolina at this time. There's my lovely wife, April. Glad you are we're here with us, April. April and I are going to have... Uh, a great time tonight. We're going to roast some hot dogs over the fire. So I'm looking forward to that in just a, the next few minutes. All right. Well, if you've got a Bible, and if somebody comes on and watches this by replay, you can put in their hashtag replay. I'd love to greet you as well. I'm going to be going to the book of Ephesians tonight. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, last Sunday and Monday, I was sharing with you about 10 keys to personal motivation. And then Monday night, I shared with you about uh, eight pitfalls to motivation. And something unusual happened last Sunday night when I was on this broadcast live last Sunday night. <clears throat> something began to come against my mind and i know when i'm i'm breaking through something or there's some type of transition that's happening for someone in the spirit and i sensed last sunday night that something was happening in someone's life and at the same time, there was a demonic voice that was trying to speak to my mind while I was talking to you. Now, I've been doing public speaking and ministering and preaching for long enough that I've learned how to bust through that, I'll say, how to overcome that, how to break through it and, and really just cast it off and keep going. 
but I knew something was going on immediately. Let me stop for just a minute. I see several coming on right now. Gregory Lee Davis, glad you are here with us from Southern Illinois. What are you doing in Illinois? Greg, I thought you were a Tennessee guy. There's Chauncey. Good evening, Chauncey. Glad you're here. It's almost evening now. Uh, it's not afternoon anymore, Chauncey. <laughs> but let me move forward here. So last Sunday night as I began teaching you, something began assaulting or trying to assault my mind or attack my mind. Oh, I recognize that because for the most part, I live in peace. I have a perspective of joy. Um, you know, I, I don't, there's not certain things that I'm struggling with. And I'm not trying to say that to, to take anything away from anyone else. I'm just saying I live in a certain mental climate that uh, is filled with peace. I love peace. But I've found this. There's a battle for peace. And there's a battle for peace of mind. There is a battle for peace of heart. And I don't ever want you to discount yourself as insignificant or that you don't make a difference in this world because I believe that your enemy, the devil, the Bible says that the devil is our enemy. He's not God's enemy. Peter says our enemy, our adversary, the devil, roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I began sharing this with my household of faith today, and I'm going to give you eight things here tonight. But I want you to know that there is a battle for peace, a battle for righteousness, right living, right words. There is a battle for truth. Dr. Kreitz said this to me many moons ago. He said, Todd, the greatest battle you will ever face will be the battle for your mind. Let me say that again to you. The greatest battle that you will ever face will be the battle for your mind. And I have found this to be true. Everyone that's listening to me tonight, everyone that may be listening to me live, you may be listening to this by replay. Everyone here is going to face different battles. And you're going to face different battles at different times. There is the battle for the mind of the spirit. And of course, there is the battle of the mind of the flesh. The Bible tells us, in Romans chapter 8 about being carnally minded, he says is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There's going to be all kind of battles that we face mentally. And I'm trying to help you tonight to get through these things. I'm, I've got some great keys in pushing forward through a mental battle. Sometimes it may be a battle of fear. Sometimes it may be a battle of discouragement. It may be a battle of doubts or even depression. You know, I think about this on this Memorial Day weekend. This is a, a weekend. Tomorrow is a day that is commemorating those who have fallen in battle. You know, it's not Veterans Day. That's a time when we commemorate our veterans. But this is a time that we commemorate those that have paid the ultimate price. They laid their lives down in battle that we may have freedom. We're all going to face battles, but we don't have to face them the same way. And if you will jot these down, I encouraged everyone in my household of faith today to put these into their phone because there may be a time when you may you may not be able to, you may be away from home or something. You may not have your notes and you can just pull this up on your phone. You know, you may be battling anxiety, worry, fears, stress. It could even be, uh, you may be battling being restless or agitated at times. 
But here's what we have to learn to do. We have to learn to overcome, endure, and sometimes even wrestle against something. So I'm going to read this to you from Ephesians chapter 6. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 6 and 11 to put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor, not just some pieces, but the whole armor. If you're coming on tonight, let me know where you're watching from. Give me a thumbs, a heart. Uh, I'd love to greet you. He says, we put on the whole armor that we may be able to stand against the schemes of the strategies. If you're reading from the Amplified, it says the the schemes, the strategies, or the deceptions of the devil. We put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand the whole armor. See, the armor is going to give me an ability, an ability to stand against his strategies. My wife said this today after I got done ministering. She said, you know, many times the uh, our adversary is more strategic than we are. We have to have a strategy. And I'm going to give you eight strategies tonight for thwarting or uh, overcoming a mental attack on you. Most of the, the battle that you face, even though it is a spiritual battle, is going to be a battle for the mind. You know, years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I read the book by Joyce Myers, The Battlefield of the Mind. I read another book uh, by Francis Frangipane. It's called The Three Battlegrounds. And it was about the battle in your mind. This is the war. This is the battleground. This is the battleground. This is where the enemy will uh, most of the time assault you. Now, there may be other battles that we face, but I'm primarily focusing on the mental battle. I want you to win this battle. I want you to win the battle of the mind. We learn how to overcome this. Sometimes we may just have to endure it. But no matter what, we may have to wrestle against this. Paul goes on and he says in verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But he says well, there is a wrestling that's going on. So you might as well go ahead and begin to outfit your mind to know that there will be times of wrestlings and things that you may have to wrestle against. That's what the Bible tells us. Paul goes on, he says, take unto you the whole armor of God. He tells us this again, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Sometimes it's just a day that happens. You didn't you didn't do anything to initiate it. I was telling you last Sunday while I was teaching here on Wisdom Talk, talking to you about motivation, something began to attack or assault my mind. Now, I've had this happen multiple times when I was preaching or I'd be in a pulpit or wherever. I've had the enemy literally try to barrage my mind with thoughts. How is it that I'm going to push forward and overcome this? Well, here's here's a further story of this. You know, when when I got done last Sunday night teaching here on Wisdom Talk, I went out of my office, I went downstairs, and I went straight to my wife. I told her, I said, something is trying to attack my mind. Something is trying to attack my mind. That attack did not let up. I went to bed Sunday evening. I got up Monday morning. The attack intensified, and it continued throughout Monday. Then I taught on Wisdom Talk Monday evening. That attack continued into Tuesday. And on into Tuesday night, I got up Wednesday. It had continued and even intensified more on Wednesday. I'm battling in my mind. And I, the strange thing is I'm teaching on, and I taught on motivation last week, and then I sensed I didn't even have any motivation. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was like I didn't want to do anything. I had no enthusiasm about anything. I'm just being 
candid and straightforward with you here. But I have to learn how to battle through these times. Sometimes the very thing that you're talking about or teaching on the enemy, he will try to, to come and try you in the thing. So we have to put on the whole armor because this is a spiritual war that we face. We are in a spiritual war. Maybe you need to, to say that out loud to yourself right where you are. I'm in a spiritual war. But for the most part of this war, it's going to be fought in the battlefield of your mind. Now, sometimes victory can take, it can take months. I've had battles that lasted for months, weeks, days. But I've also learned that some battles can only last for moments Listen to me very closely what I'm about to tell you. Some battles will only last for moments if you have the right information and the right revelation. Listen to what I'm telling you tonight. I've found that battles can will only last for moments if you have the right information and the right revelation. There's a battle going on. Some of you may be battling self-image, self-identity. You may be in a, a battle of the will. No matter what it is, the enemy is going to try to barrage your mind with lies. That's, that's his main weapon. That's his main tool. He is the father of lies. Jesus said that Satan was the father of lies. If there's a lie, he's the father of it. It's a mental war. A mental war. And that's what he uses. Tools of propaganda. You know, the word demon or devil in Greek, diablos, it means a slanderer. He's going to say things about you and other people. He's going to, to speak things that are not true. Misinformation. And he will try to exploit you. It doesn't matter whether you're a mature believer or an immature believer. He's going to try his best to exploit you. And let me go ahead and tell you this further. No one, no one that's listening to me is exempt from a spiritual attack. No one. So don't, don't think, you know, well, you know, I used to think uh, in a naive wave, I used to think, you know, why, why would Satan waste his time with me? I'm not Billy Graham or, you know, I'm not some well-known person. If you're a child of God, you're in the kingdom of God, you are a threat to his kingdom. You are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Don't ever underestimate what God has in store for you or the plan that he has for you. So we learn to withstand him or overcome him. First thing, I want you to write this down for yourself. Put it, put it in your phone. I'm going to give you eight strategies right here, and then I'm going to be done. Eight strategic positions for battling in your mind. Number one, a battle can be a distraction. A battle may be a diversion. You've got to know this right off. Sometimes the enemy is attacking you in a certain area because he's trying to get your attention off of something else. Let me say that again to you. A battle may be a diversion or a distraction. You know, sometimes you're not battling because you've done something wrong. It's because you've done something right. You better listen to what I'm telling you here. <coughs> Sometimes you're battling, not because you've done something wrong, but because you've done something right. Last week, I was talking about motivation. Halfway through the message last Sunday night here on Wisdom Talk, the enemy began assaulting my mind. Why? Because someone was being motivated to make a change. Something was happening in the atmosphere. Something was shifting in the spirit for somebody somewhere. And because of that, he's thinking, I got to shut this guy down. I got to begin to affect his mind. Here's what you have to do. 
knowing this, that the battle is, if the battle is a distraction, if it's a diversion, you have to decide your focus. You decide what you're going to focus on. See, he may be trying to break your focus. He's really trying to divert the future. He's trying to distract you from a future. See, not every battle is about a position. Not every battle is about a position, but it may be a distraction from what you're doing right. Just to simply get you off course. Let me give you an example. I coached soccer for about 20 years. I learned uh, a valuable lesson when I was coaching youth soccer. I've coached from you know little five-year-olds all the way up to college players. In youth soccer, they give us a timeout. Soccer doesn't have timeouts, but in youth soccer, they give us a timeout. I learned the power of this thing. When the other team would start winning or beating my team, and they were doing what they were doing well, I would call a timeout. 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 Let's stop this. My kids would come running over to me and they were like, what, what are we doing wrong, coach? I said, you're not doing anything wrong. Nothing. I'm trying to get the other team to forget what they're doing. You better hear what I just said. You have to learn the, the power of a diversion and the power of a distraction. Our enemy knows that. If he can get you distracted and diverted and get you off of your focus and get you off of the momentum that you're building, if he begins to attack your mind and gets you from where you were and focused on what he's trying to say to you and what he's wanting to do, then he's diverting your future. See, I'm just trying to get the other team to forget what they were doing because they were doing it right and they were doing it well. And that's why we were losing at that moment. Number two, number two, write this down for yourself. This one's, this is my key point on this one. Do not fight alone. Do not fight alone. Number two, do not fight alone. I will go ahead and tell you, isolation is dangerous. Isolation is dangerous. Last night, when I, last week, when I sensed that mental attack trying to come to me while I was teaching, when I, when I got done with Wisdom Talk last Sunday night, I walked straight downstairs to my wife and I said, something is trying to attack me mentally. Now, why did I do that? Because I have learned to get other people involved. Get other people to pray for you and communicate what's going on. Communicate, that's right, Greg, uh, Jeff, do not fight alone. Communicate what's going on. Why? Because I have found that when you unite your faith with someone, this can break, literally break the demonic strategy or the demonic tie that, that they're trying to tie to your life. Encouragement is key here. Encouragement is key. You know, the Bible tells us one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. The Bible tells us that any two of you will touch and agree concerning anything that it will be done by my Father, which is in heaven. The power of agreement. I don't fight alone. If the enemy can get you isolated, you are in a dangerous spot. Number three. Number three. Work to cleanse your mind and keep it fresh. Work, this is number three, number three, work to cleanse your mind and keep it fresh. What do I mean by this? Ephesians 5.26 tells us that the there's a, a washing of the water of the word. The, the word of God will wash your mind. Jesus said in John 15 and 3, he said, you're clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. You ever taken a shower 
a bath and you get out and you feel just refreshed by it. The word of God has a way of cleansing your mind and actually refreshing it to keep keep your mind, work to cleanse your mind and keep it fresh. This is important. Get in the word of God and let it wash you. I'm talking about a mental attack coming against you. Get into the word of God and let it wash you. You know, here's another part to that. Hearing the voice of a uh, of of a spiritual father, hearing a voice of a spiritual leader, I've also have found in this area can pull me back into a proper perspective and literally break the battle. There's been times when I was battling something in my mind and I'd tune into Wisdom Talk and listen to Dr. Christ and it, it broke something in my mind. Bam, changed. Why? Because my perspective and my focus shifted away from what I was going through and it shifted into where I'm going to. I hope you just heard that. It shifted from what I'm going through into where I'm going to. So having the voice of a spiritual leader, you know, a spirit, someone's a spiritual father to you, it can completely break the battle and, and shift the perspective. Fourth thing tonight. This one may be kind of a long, but that's why I'm asking you to put it in your phone. Write it down in your phone on your notepad in there. Some battles are won by a strategy and others are won by endurance. Some battles, this is something that you may have to remind yourself of. Some battles are won by strategy. Others are won by endurance. Galatians 6 and 9 tells us this. Let us not become weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not become weary in well-doing. Here's what I'm doing right now. I'm eradicating the word tired from my vocabulary. I'm not even going to say the word anymore. I'm just going to call it the T word. It's become a dirty word. If you get around people who are talking about that they're tired and, oh, I'm so tired, it will make you tired. And I'm not even going to talk this word anymore. This word is leaving from me. I'm not going to talk it. Why? Because if your enemy begins to convince you of how weary you are and how, you know, T-word you are, then you're not going to, in your mind, be fit for endurance because some battles are only won by endurance. You know, that was the, that was the stray. You ever watch the movie Rocky? That was his strategy. I love those movies. That was his strategy. He wasn't going to come out and try to beat somebody in the first round. He was literally going to let the other person wear themselves out trying to beat him. Because that was his strategy, was to endure to the end. You know, the Bible tells us that we must endure to the end. In other words, spiritual fitness is going to be key. I have to keep myself spiritually fit in order to endure. I've got to be at my optimal. I can't be walking around thinking, oh, I'm so tired. If that's the case, then I've got to make changes. I've got to make changes. I'm not going to talk the T word anymore. It's gone from here. You got to know this, that weariness is the object of your enemy in order to get you to give up. Do you know how many people give up right before their greatest breakthrough? Do you know how many times people give up, throw in the towel, quit right before the breakthrough comes? Why do you think that he's trying to weary you? Because he knows that something's about to happen. I don't know how they know. And they, the, your enemies, they don't know everything. That's for sure. But they know when something is coming, a breakthrough is coming. They know when there's a spiritual movement that's happening around your life. And if they can get you weary and tired and get you to a place where you just give up, then they've thwarted your destiny. Number five. Number five. <coughs> 
Find a quiet moment with the Holy Spirit. That's my fifth strategy. When you're going through a mental attack, find a quiet moment with the Holy Spirit. I began to seek out the voice and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Whenever I'm going through a trial, a test, a battle, because this will make all the difference. The voice and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will make all the difference when you're facing a battle. Now I'm going to tell you this. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. Sometimes you've made a mistake. Sometimes you've made just a blunder. And it happens to us all. We, we do, sometimes we just do stupid things. And we don't realize it till later. Well, this happened with David. David made a mistake. He made a blunder one time. And because of it, it says that all of the people wanted to stone him. These were people that were with him. People that were on his side. These were not enemies. In 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, it says that David had to encourage himself in the Lord. Because he couldn't find anybody at that moment to encourage him. You've got to know this. When you're facing a battle, a mental battle, a time when the enemy may be trying to exploit you, you just may not be able to find somebody to encourage you. So you're going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's why I said I find a, I seek a quiet moment with the Holy Spirit. There's got to be an encouraging moment. I have to encourage myself in the Lord. There may not be anyone to re rely on or lean on at that moment. Number six, rein in your imaginations. That's R-E-I-G-N. Rein in your imaginations, like the reins on a horse. Rein them in. This is my sixth strategy and point to you when you're facing a mental attack. Rein in your imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5 tells us this. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 5 and 6. How do I know those scriptures? How can I just quote them? Because I've had to rely on them. The imagination is a gift from God. God gave you the gift of an imagination for creativity. But this thing can turn on you. It can flip on you. And in a moment of battle and attack, in a moment of weariness, your imagination can start running wild. You have to put a stop to your imagination. You have to put a stop to your mind and begin from, from it making up scenarios, making up things. Things that you don't even have any evidence of. What do I mean? Speculations, suspicions. Your mind starts wondering. You can get in a whole lot of trouble just with those things speculating about things. Well, maybe that's what is going on. Maybe that, you know, uh, maybe if your, your mind, when it starts thinking in that, that way, it will start thinking in those terms, maybes and ifs, and well, it might be, or it can become suspicious. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. That was my sixth thing. Rein in your imaginations. Number seven. Number seven. Limit what you listen to in the season of battle. Limit what you listen to in the season of battle. It's 8.34 here on the East Coast, and I'm almost done. Limit what you listen to in the season of battle. That's number seven. I need you to know this. It's only a season. 
It's only a season. Here's what Dr. Kreitz told me a couple of years ago. A battle's not a lifestyle, Todd. If so, something's wrong. Let me say that again to you. He said to me, a battle is an event. It's not a lifestyle. If it's a lifestyle, then something's wrong with the person. Now, I did tell you that some battles can go on for months, some weeks, some for days. But when you have the right information and the right revelation, sometimes they can only last for moments. I went through a mental battle from Sunday night doing wisdom talk all the way through uh, Wednesday. And it, I got other people involved. I had other people praying for me, other people agreeing with me. You know, I began limiting what I was listening to. I reined in my imaginations. Thank you, Miss Sherry. I've learned don't fight alone. I've learned don't get distracted or diverted by the battle. Keep your focus. I've learned to work to keep my mind clean and keep it fresh. I'm not going to get weary in well-doing. I learned to find quiet moments with the Holy Spirit. But this one's huge too. Limit what you're listening to in the season of battle. And know that it's only a season. Because here's the whole thing. Your hearing is going to determine your perception. Let me say that again. Your hearing is going to determine your perception. Whatever you're hearing is what you're going to start seeing. It's like Bishop Kreitz says all the time. Papa Kreitz says, where your focus goes, your energy flows. Many times, you, if the enemy is trying to defer your focus and get it over here, that's because he's trying to get your energy over there off of where it needs to be. <coughs> you have to seek the truth and know the truth. You know, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It says, make you free. Bishop Christ said it this way. I loved this when he said this. He said, truth doesn't set you free. It's the truth you know that sets you free. It's not the truth that sets you free. It's the truth you know. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth you know. You know that the enemy is fighting you with lies, propaganda, misinformation. That's his tools. Proverbs 4.23 tells us this. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Luke 8 and 18 says this. Jesus said, take heed how you hear. We not only have to take heed of what we hear, but how we hear. Take heed how how you hear. You ever notice you can say something and people, two different people have heard two different things. Why? Because it's how they hear. People hear through their filter. They hear according to their perception of things. Number eight. Number eight. This is my last point to you tonight, family. And then we're going to enjoy this Memorial Day weekend. Don't misinterpret the battle. That's number eight. Don't misinterpret the battle. Don't misinterpret the battle. What do I mean by this? You have to know that some things are flesh and some things are spirit. Why am I saying this? Because I've witnessed and watched many Christian people Blame the devil for things that he wasn't doing. You can't rebuke flesh. And you can't cast out flesh. And I'm telling you this because James 1 and 14 tells us this. That any time a man is enticed or tempted, he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed.
Some battles that you're facing are because of things in your flesh. If there's a certain propensity for things, I've mentioned several things so far. If you have a propensity to be more depressed, then that's something that you're going to fight. A propensity towards fear, anxiety, worry, stress. Of course, you're going to be fighting this. But don't misinterpret the battle. If it's something that's going on, I have to understand this. If I'm being attacked in a certain area, yes, it may be because I'm doing something right, but there also may be an attack because there is a propensity for, for something in my own flesh. I mean, he can't entice me with something that I don't have a desire for in the first place <coughs> or a weakness towards or something that I'm intrigued about. I tell this to young people all the time. Satan will deceive you sometimes because you're curious and don't let your curiosity of things you don't know uh, allow you to be drawn off into a place that you, you can't come back from or you become a captive to. If you have an open door, listen to this very closely. This is my last, and this is my last point. This is why I'm saying don't misinterpret the battle. If you have an open door in your life to lust, to fear, or to pride, you're going to have battles in those areas. There's going to be mental battles. Here's what I've learned to do. I don't blame the devil for my unresolved stuff. I don't blame the devil for my unresolved stuff. He gets blamed way too much by people. You you have to know that this, this isn't a battle. This is my flesh. I mean, this is what he has an open door to. I mean, Genesis, when, when, when God cursed the serpent, he told him, on your belly you shall crawl all the days of your life, and dust you shall eat. This is what he feeds on. He feeds on the, the carnality of man. This is why it's important that we grow and mature beyond you know, the appetites of the flesh. I'm telling you now, you can reduce the amount of battles in your life by overcoming the obstacles in your flesh. If, he, if there's no open door, there's not an avenue for him to come in. You know, I gave some examples today in my household of faith of things that, that I, I can't be, uh, I have no desire towards. So there's nothing for him to work with there in the first place. But if there's something to work with, then of course, this is the area he, he's going to hit you. You may be just going along doing your thing, doing what's right, and all of a sudden, bam, something comes out of nowhere. We know last week, here I was on Wisdom Talk last Sunday night, talking to you about motivation, keys to motivation, pitfalls to motivation, and bam, out of nowhere, here comes a mental assault on me to break my focus, to break my momentum, and to get me unmotivated and uh, lose my enthusiasm about what I'm doing in life. What did I have to do? I had to do these things that I was just talking about. I had to not fight alone. I had to find some quiet moments with the Holy Spirit. I had to get into the Word of God and let it wash my mind and refresh it. I had to start reining in my imaginations, put a stop to my mind. I put a stop to those thoughts. When, when the enemy is trying to barrage your thoughts and your mind, you have the power to put a stop to it. Now, that doesn't always mean that it's going to, to end. You're going to have to learn to withstand him. That's why Paul says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. Jesus, Jesus showed this to us when he was being tempted of the devil in the wilderness. Three times it says that Satan came to him, and what did he do? He used the word of God, 
And then uh, as, as he withstood him, it says that, that Satan left him for a little season. Yeah, he'll leave. But you have to know that he'll come back again. You're going to face battles. That's just going to happen. Mental attacks, mental assaults are going to happen. Let me encourage you with something before I go tonight. Dr. Kreitz wrote this book. It's called 10 Golden Keys, How to Unlock Doors in Difficult Times. 10 Golden Keys, How to Unlock Difficult Doors, or excuse me, Unlock <laughs> Doors in Difficult Times. This is a great book. Don't you love that rear cover design? 10 Golden Keys. This book, he, he gives you about uh, when you need answers and you desire wisdom, how you can discover a golden key to unlock a brighter and better day. I'm going to be honest with you. When I got done with Wisdom Talk last week on Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were some of the most difficult days mentally that I've had in 27 years of being a Christian. But here I am. I'm standing. I'm victorious. I'm overcoming. Why? Because I've learned how to execute these things. Now, I'm not saying these are the only eight things. I'm sure there's some you could probably add to this. But I'm just sharing with you what I have learned in how to overcome mental attacks. I'm Dr. Todd Williams joining you tonight. If you want to get a copy of this book, you can go to paulkreitz.com and you click on, Jeff's got it right there. You can click on the resource tab and all of Dr. Kreitz's books will come up. You'll see, you know, Discovering the Power of Purpose. You'll see Confessions of a Faithful Father. You'll see all the books that are there. Some are e-books. Uh, you know, some are audio, there's audio books there. You can get these as resources to help you through a difficult time, believe me, the voice of my spiritual father many times has broken the battle just by shifting my perspective and my focus from what I was going through to where I'm going to. And that will break the battle. I hope I've helped you tonight. If I have, I would love for you to sow a, a seed into my spiritual father's ministry, Dr. Paul Kreitz. Here he is right here behind me, right over my shoulder. I have him watching over me while I'm speaking to you because I'm standing in for him tonight. It's my privilege and pre pleasure to do so. Hey, do not miss tomorrow night. I won't be with you. It's going to be Joe Doherty. Joe Doherty. If you don't have Joe on Facebook, I'm a, I'll put his name in here in just a few minutes. I'll tag him. Joe is going to be doing Wisdom Talk tomorrow night live from Las Vegas, and he's going to have a special guest on. It's going to be... Elvis Presley's brother, his name is David E. Stanley. Elvis Presley's brother is going to be joining Joe for Wisdom Talk tomorrow night. It's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. We look forward to seeing it. I thank you, Joe, uh, for Jeff, for putting those in. You can sow a seed at Cash App to dollar sign Dr. Paul Kreitz. That's dollar sign Dr. Paul Kreitz. I'm just asking you to sow a seed toward his ministry. If you haven't tithed for the month of May, you got one day left in the month. So, <laughs> hey, I'll see you back next Sunday night. I'm glad I could join you. I hope y'all have a great Memorial Day. I'm going to roast me a hot dog right here, right now. I'll see you. Bye-bye.